before we get started, I <laughs> I read the book. Um, obviously, I'm doing a review of it. But oh, <laughs> oops, cable were not as long as a lot. But uh, guess who forgot to write notes? Oops, it happens. Oh well. <laughs> so uh, yeah, today, as the title said, we're gonna look at haha, a venom dark and sweet by Judy I. Lin. Just like last time, where we looked at actually. Let me just be casual over here and be like, a magic steeped in poison. The f first book in this duology. Now we're looking at the second book in the duology. And first thing I want to say is, it's kind of great that it wasn't the eighth trilogy or something, but that we're getting more single books or duologies or quartologies. Like it's all, like for many years it's been like either it's a trilogy or a pentology. It's great seeing authors like doing different things, being allowed. I guess I don't know if the. I guess somewhat forced at times because of money, but I'm glad to see more of different. But uh, yeah, so a Venom Dark and Sweet currently stands at just above three and a half stars on Goodreads based on 8,000 ratings and 1,500 reviews. So that's pretty darn good. Um, it didn't get any nominations, but I mean, it doesn't surprise me. It's it's good though. It's it's a good rating and it's a good amount of people who read it and that's awesome. All right, let's talk about the cover. I'm gonna place it here so I can see it while I talk and I'm gonna have it here. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about the cover. The cover is just like the first book. It's bright, it's colorful and we have a person in the center. And this time it's Kang and I don't mind it. I actually think it's perfectly fine. Again, just like the first book, it doesn't detract, the character managed to stay out without being boring, just a character. And I think that's awesome. Something interesting though, is the like color of the hair. Kinda, and the way, and I guess that's for both books. The way the hair moves reminds me of like, I suppose it's kinda on purpose. It's kinda like the uh, team, like the magic and how po the poison and all that works. So that's awesome. On it we of course have snakes given snakes is a huge theme in this book so yeah given we have snakes slithering around it's that's spot on i love the coloring of them it's very bright and i thought something was outside <laughs> it's very bright it's very lively and yeah just wondered and then of course we have the teapot and all that stuff the only thing i don't like is the quote i hope i'm pointing correctly or else it's gonna be fun but up here which is a kingdom falls and ancient evil rises so it's not a quote, but it doesn't belong on the cover. So uh, yeah, also because the cover the cover is done by Si Chia Hong, who also did the first book, which we could see because they match. So yeah, alright. So let's get to, I guess, a re freestyle review of uh, of the book. This review might then turn to be a little rainy at times. So uh, please bear with me because I'm freestyling it. Yo, 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 what's up, what's up, my... I don't know. I'm white. <laughs> okay, let's talk about it. So let's start with some things I really like. I love the story and like, that's it. That's all. Done. Done here. Leave a like, comment and subscribe for more. No, I like the story. I like how it took, like, it expanded the world in places we heard about. But a lot of them we didn't like expect to see because the entire first book takes place in one big city and then a little in Sue's home, not Sue, Ning's home place. It's Sue. That's the place. I like that. I think that is um, like a natural progression because what you want to do in your sequel is expand the world and you really want to expand it as much as possible without overcrowding it or anything. But you want to make it feel almost new again, but still familiar, if that makes sense. Um, I honestly think, and it's gonna sound bad, um, Chef Rilla's uh, studios, I think, Chef Rilla Productions, link, link in the description. He did a video on Shrek 2 on why and where he discussed it and he nailed it so hard, I can only recommend that video. But yeah, basically you wanna expand the world somehow. You wanna make it new, you wanna make it unique, but you wanna keep it familiar in some ways. And here we get to see a lot of places we have heard mentioned. So it's not completely new, in a sense, like an overall sense, but it's completely new. In fact, we haven't been there, we haven't met the characters, we haven't seen the places. Another thing I really, really loved is the expansion of the uh, magic system. But again, it's also my biggest gripe with this book. 
It expands the magic systems in two ways, and I love one of them, and I... Because it's a duology, I think Lin kind of shot herself in the foot because I kind of disliked the same way. So let's start with the one I liked and we'll get to the other one afterwards. I love how Ning at some point realizes that uh, she can, like, the soup is just water with ingredients. Tea is just water with ingredients. So if you make your soup with ingredients that you would use for magic in your tea, you can use the soup for your magic, just like the tea. And it's logical, but it's not something that you think about in the first book. You're not like, oh, why didn't she just make, you know, soup? And like now that they did it, it totally makes sense. But it's also a great way of expanding our knowledge. Now, the way I did the thing I dislike is the description like magic is everywhere and there's all these kind of magic systems. Well, not magic systems, but magic types, I guess. I don't know how, to, like, because it's not explained very well and it's not really done very well. Like, we get these guards of magic, like the fire bird guard woman has that teleportation, flying feather, and stuff. And all that, perfectly fine, because they're the guards. They're supposed to have some bunker style, because they're guards. But we also told every human has it, like, her sister. Isn't her sister's name Sue? I do believe so. Her magic is so different. But we're not explained how it works, so it's kind of... Because it doesn't, but it does. Mm. So I, I like that she tried to expand it, and I think she did well with one of the ways she expanded, but not so much in the other. And then let's get to my big gripe with this. Pacing, oh my god. Slow it down, woman. Well, it's 400 pages. You kind of have to get going, or you need another book, or make this book insanely long. But that would be a little weird with the length of the first book. But again, I also wanted the first book to slow down the pace, so maybe just slow it down. Yeah, so that's basically my thing. I really like a slow burn more. Like, not too slow, but definitely slower than this. Not bad, but definitely. My biggest gripe with this book, and it's kind of weird. We're told that she, like every time she uses magic, we're told the uh, Gong Yu, the big bad, new bad guy in this book, new, but the bad guy in this book, um, was like following her. And th then my assumption, oh, then she knows, don't use your magic or the big bad guy will come after you. But then we're like more than three quarters in the book and then she's like, oh shit, he comes every time I use my magic. And it's like, yes, you told us that half a book earlier. Why is that? Why do you mention it now again? Like it's something new. It's not. It, it just felt like that needed a second pass through. Like maybe make some realization that oh shit, this is what's going on. Then have a lot of things go, and then she's like oh shit, I completely forgot because of blah blah blah. Yep, yeah, that would work. But just make it sound seem like oh she just realized that that laid in the book. It was those bonkers, in my opinion. The final thing I dislike, and okay, all the things that I say I dislike, I don't actually dislike. I honestly think they are... Okay, maybe not the, this one is not nitpick, but the other things I think is more like Nick pity because they don't really change a lot or add a lot to the book. So, like, everything is so high in quality. These things are like, instead of here, they're here. So, it's like, okay, not that bad. But this one for me is like down here. However, for my girlfriend, who also read the book, it's like still up here. And that's the villain, the, the almost twist villain-esque villain. I'm not gonna spoil who the villains are and all that, but I honestly didn't agree with that being the right decision. I don't think that was like a, like how you should do it. So the villain is a twist villain, spoiler. And how you, I would like you to do a twist villain is, I want you to leave hints throughout the book. Like have a red herring villain, that everybody's gonna be, oh, he's the bad guy. And he is probably very bad. No, no, that's why. But he's not the main bad guy. But you want it so when you find out who the actual real bad guy is, you want everything to be like, oh, that makes sense. But this didn't. At least not to me. But my girlfriend said she's like, oh, yeah, she got it right away. So maybe it's just me who's weird. I don't know. Um, but to me, that really knocked the book down for me. Is it a bad book, though? Not at all. So, I don't know. Um... I honestly think you should read this book, and I would definitely recommend it. Well, I would recommend you read the first one first, because otherwise it makes no sense. So let's talk about like the entire duology, because I think we should have a little discussion how that feels. And like, 
So the second first book ends with her dying. Well, it's a she dies, and that's fine and all. But I already knew there was a sequel. I'm not dumb. <laughs> like okay, it's also a YA book. So I'm not dumb either. But you know, we we knew she wasn't dead, and that but I was fine. I liked how it went. Um, yeah, I, I think that was a good way, like transition, because the second book technically takes place right after. So, yeah, that's okay. What, like, is a bit weird though to me, is how set in stone the magic is in the first book and not that much in the second. Like the second feels way more like a loose magic system, whereas in the first it felt way more hard to me. Mm, I don't know. I, I like both. I think they both did good, but I, I think that's a, a weird discrepancy. Because either or would work fine in both books. And it's not like the first book is a super hard magic system, but it really felt like it was pseudo hard. That there were some rules that you do need tea or soup, which is the tea of foods. Um, well, in the second, it was more like, yeah, tea, tea is just like the ones in Harry Potter. If you're good enough, you don't need it. And it's like, when was that established? And we don't even see it. Because every time they do magic, they use either tea or soup. Mainly tea, of course. So it's like... I, I'm gonna say that's a doubt. That's a doubt there for, for me. But uh, otherwise, I would definitely recommend this duology. And uh, yeah, leave a like, comment and subscribe. Next time we'll be talking about Prince of Thorns? Yes, Prince of Thorns by Mark Lawrence. Yeah, see ya.